Hey everyone, this is Daniel. In today's video, we are going to do a Viva Pulse versus Microsoft Forms, the differences and the similarities. And if you think about an overview, they do sound very similar. And yes, there are some similarities, but there are also some important differences, which I will cover in this video. Now, if you haven't already, I highly urge you to go watch the introduction to Viva video because I did that about three weeks ago. It'll give you a good overview of what Viva Pulse is all about. Then come back and watch this video. So stick around. This is all very important. But first, here's my intro video. So what we have over here is a side-by-side -side comparison of Microsoft Forms, which is on the left, and Viva Pulse, which is on the right. And the first similarity that you see is that both of them can be accessed directly through the web browser. So that's a really good similarity. But what we're going to do is now actually attempt to create a Viva Pulse, take a look at what the question and answer types available you are there, and we'll see what the similarities show up directly on the Microsoft Forms. So as you must have seen me do this in the introduction to Viva video, um, you come over here directly to the home page of Viva Pulse, uh, and then you can always start two ways. You can actually click on send a Viva Pulse button, or you can use one of these template options that are already available. Either way, it still leads you to the template ones, um, but I'll just show you what that means. So when I click on a send a pulse, uh, it says choose a question template. So this is what I was saying is that if you select that send a pulse button, or if you choose a template, both of them land you at the templates, all right? Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick one which already has very few questions, and there you go, this is a good one. The manager focus, it only has two questions in it. That gives me the flexibility to add more questions. So I'm gonna go and click on that, and now it's taking me to the customized template section. And it is saying that, okay, your organization may have policies, all that is good, so I'm just gonna click got it. Um, to make it easier, I'm gonna go ahead and maximize the screen so you can actually see everything going on. Um, and then here is where we start adding some questions. So what I'll do is I'll actually come to the bottom and I'm gonna go and add a question. Now when I add a question, these are the three options that we have. There is rating, multiple choice, and open text. So let's take a look at rating first. So when I click on rating, right over here, you've got the question name the question text, and then these are the labels that we have, the scale labels. Keep in mind that when we put these scale labels, I'm given two options. I'm only given what is the one, what is the five, and then I don't have any other options to add any other ones. So if you take a closer look over here, it says one is going to be the strongly disagree or the extreme negative, and then five is the strongly agree or the extreme positive. These are the only options that you have directly on the Viva Pulse site. So that's question number one. So that's question number one over here in Viva Pulse. Now, if we switch gears and take a look at it from the Microsoft Form site, we'll see what the difference is. So I'll go and click on a Microsoft Form. Over here, you've got the flexibility to actually pick and choose a blank form. You don't have to select a template. However, there are some awesome templates that are available. I highly urge you to start with one of those so you don't have to start fresh over here. However, in our scenario, this is the one that we actually wanna go and use. Um, so I'm gonna click on new and right over here, you've got choice and you've got rating. So we could actually use both of them to replicate the rating functionality which we just saw in Viva Pulse. And also just to make sure if I click on the drop down, uh, if I click on the drop down, you've also got the Likert and then you've got all these other functions. So let's actually take a look at the rating as well here in Microsoft Forms because that's just what we did in Viva Pulse. So if I click on rating over here, you see that I've got a little bit more flexibility. But if I do a side by side comparison, you can actually see that it's a little different. So over here on the rating in Viva Pulse, I had a question name, question text, and then here are the only two labels. While in Microsoft Forms, I again have a question name, uh, but then I've got different levels over here. So I can say that okay, this is going to be like a 10 level rating. Um, and I can also go and change it to what it wants, a star, a number, a heart, thumb like. You've got so many options over here. Um, and directly in Microsoft Forms, you know that you've got the option to make it as a required or not required. You basically just toggle the switch on and on. Uh, you don't have the flexibility in Viva Pulse because everything over there by default is required. But as you can see, there is some really good flexibility. 
and things you might already be aware of in Microsoft form side is that you can add a picture directly to a question. So you can go ahead and insert an image. You can also go and insert a video. B images can come from all of these different platforms available from Bing, OneDrive, or you can go and upload it. You've got these different options available, but this is basically the side-by-side -side comparison of the rating question type in Viva Pulse and in Microsoft Forms. So let's go back to Viva Pulse and in our question, we can see that there is a multiple choice. So when I select the multiple choice, here, this I really like because now it's giving us some flexibility, first of all, to add the question text, but then what are the different options that you have? So he's already giving me three, calling them as option one, option two, option three, and then giving me the flexibility to go and add some more. So I'm just gonna click and see, okay, how many am I actually allowed to ask? Can I at least do 10? Uh, so I'm gonna make sure I can do that. And there you go, I can actually do 10. I'm sure I can do more. Uh, and I also like that it gives me the add other option. So it just makes me that flexibility. But this is again the flexibility of adding multiple choice type answer in Viva Pulse. Now we'll switch gear over and take a look at it from the Microsoft Form stand standpoint. You have choice. It's just called as choice. It doesn't say multiple choice. It's just choice. But when I select on the choice, right over here, there is a toggle switch. It says, hey, do you want this as a select? Do you want this as a single selection, which is why we only see these radio buttons, or do you really want this as a multiple one? Because the moment I do it, you see that radio changed into a square, which means now I can actually go and add multiple checkboxes. We see the similarity. There's an option one, option two. Over here, there's an option one, option two, uh, and I can keep adding. So let's just make sure I can at least do 10 because we did that in Viva Pulse. Let's see if it works over here in Microsoft Forms. And here we go. There's 10, and there's also the add other options. So I like the similarity. Now, there is some additional functionalities which are there in Microsoft Forms. So right over here, it says select total options. Well, what does that mean? What it's basically saying is that, hey, if you've got 10 or in this case 11, you need to select a minimum number of these options. So let's actually take a look. What we've got over here in this answer type is 10. So I can say set no limit, which is the default, um, equal to, and in the equal to, it automatically goes ahead and adds this number 11. Why? Because it automatically calculated that you've got 11 over here. If I were to go ahead and change, add or remove some, these numbers automatically change it. But, but it's not just equal to, it is equal to or at most to, it's giving you that flexibility. You don't have that though, unfortunately, in Viva Pulse. But remember once again, it's not that it's a limitation, it is by design because Viva Pulse is quick and easy fast way to get some response, Microsoft Forms does give you more flexibility because it gives you more time to fill out that form. So let's take a look at the last one too. There is called as open text. When I click on the open text in Viva Pulse, very simple and straightforward. You basically go ahead and put in whatever is your question and that's it. Well, on Microsoft Forms, if I go and now click on add plus new, I have same thing again, text, but in text, I've got some flexibility. And again, if you see a side-by-side -side comparison, you can see that it can be a simple short answer, uh, which is the default, or I can make it a long answer. And over here, it gives you the flexibility to make it nice and long. Same other features over here in Microsoft Forms. I can go ahead and add a picture. You can make it required, but you kind of get the gist of it is that, yes, they are similar, the side-by-side, -side, the question and the question text, uh, but Microsoft Forms does give you the flexibility to either make it as a single line of text or a really long answer. Viva Pulse doesn't give you that. So these were actually the three similarities that I've seen side by side. Keep in mind, Viva Pulse is quick, easy, fast. Microsoft Forms does give you the flexibility to add large forms. Therefore, even though it has still the same three features which Viva Pulse did, uh, it gives you more properties and more customizations to that answer type something which is not there in Viva Pulse. So we just saw the three similarities when it came to actually building the pulse or the form, specifically the questions. What I wanna now focus on the differences. So let's start with the first of them. In Viva Pulse, you have the options for three different question types, the three different questions that we just saw. However, Microsoft Forms has a whole bunch more and it comes with options to add images. Remember, the images we could add at the entire form level or we could add it at each and every question level. That was a big difference. In Viva Pulse, you can set the pulse for at least seven days, but you can increase that to 10 days. Um, that is actually something I showed you in my first video as well. While in Microsoft Forms, you don't have that limit. 
you decide when the start date is going to be, you decide when the end date is going to be, and that can be literally as long as you want. Um, important, important thing, Pulse is sent between the range of 3 to 25 people. You can select that many number of people, this range between 3 to 25 people. While Microsoft Forms, technically, um, you don't really have any limit. You can get up to 5 million responses. So if you kind of just think about it loosely, yes, it can be sent up to 5 million different people, uh, but it's not really any limit on how many people you can send it to. It's the limit on number of responses that you get. But hey, that limit is 5 million. Um, in Viva Pulse, um, it is built primarily for internal users. That's a very, very important key difference because in Microsoft Forms, you've got both the options. You can set it for your internal company users or you also can do it for external anonymous access users. You basically got that setting. Very, very important ones. This can actually help you make the decision too, is it who the audience is, if it is internal or external, because if it is external, then Viva Pulse is out of the picture. It has to be Microsoft Forms. And then last, but definitely not the least, when it comes to Viva Pulse, it is not part of your existing M365 license. You do need that M365 license, but in addition, you will need a Viva license. Where you can buy them individually, or you can go and buy the entire suite. You will need that additional license. Well, that's not the case for Microsoft Forms. In Microsoft Forms, it will come with your N365 license and different tiers of them provide Microsoft Forms, whether it is the Enterprise E3, E5, or same thing on the business side, all if not most of them cover the Microsoft Forms. So these are the important differences between Viva Pulse and Microsoft Forms. So hopefully this video helps you draw some conclusions as to when to use Viva Pulse versus Microsoft Forms. Because let's face it, there are some scenarios where Viva Pulse absolutely cannot be used. External access being the big one, when Microsoft Forms can be used over there. But in scenarios when you've got a small quantity of people, which is up to only 25 people, and you wanna send it for say seven to 10 days, use Viva Pulse. It's a faster way to go and do that, because in that scenario, Microsoft Forms may not be you know, the best candidate for that. So hopefully this video was helpful. And as always, keep using both Viva Pulse and Microsoft Forms. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.